Hey guys, it's been a while since I filmed a YouTube video, so I thought I would do another day in my life as a small business owner. It's been a while since I sort of showed you guys um, what's been going on in the business. Last week we celebrated our first birthday, so it's been a whole year since I launched Omnia, which is crazy because in some ways I feel like the year has gone really quickly, and then in other ways I feel like I've always had Omnia. Like, it's really weird. Um, and if you've watched my previous videos, you would know that my main goal for the business in our first year was to hit $100,000 in sales, which we hit probably about 11 days before the anniversary slash birthday. So that's really cool that we hit our goal. I'm like super proud, even though it's like, okay, cool, we've made six figures. This is just revenue, so this doesn't take into account all the expenses. Um, so people will probably think like, oh wow, you've hit six figures, you must be like raking it in, but no, um, a lot, if not most of the profit goes back into the business in order to grow it. Um, I've only sort of just started paying myself um, a wage. I'm very transparent about how much I earn in terms of sales, but there's some things that I obviously want to keep private. But if you guys um, have any other questions that maybe you want me to address in the different video, then make sure to leave a comment. Um, but yeah, I thought I'd show you guys what I do sort of on a typical day, um, like working on my small business, as I still work three days a week. Um, so Tuesday, Wednesdays and Thursdays, I work as a paralegal from home. And then pretty much every other day, I work on my small business. Most small business owners will relate that it can get really overwhelming and I feel like there's no sort of like stop button. You're always constantly working or feeling like you need to do something. You really have to step back and think, why am I doing this? Like for me, I started a business because one day I want the freedom to sort of just wake up and do whatever I want and not sort of have to worry about working. Um, I'd rather put in the work now in order to sort of enjoy my time when I have a family when I'm older. Always sort of to be like, retired by 35 um, although I think my personality type I don't think I'll ever stop working because I enjoy um, well I enjoy running the business um, I lost my train of thought oh yeah so I'm starting to try to stick to a schedule so Mondays and Fridays obviously are dedicated solely to running my business and so Mondays um, which is today I'm gonna be focusing on packing orders from the weekend. I tried not to pack orders over the weekend. However, we did have a really busy weekend and I want to get my orders out as quick as possible for my customers. So Saturday, my partner and I, um, he helped out a lot with packing the orders now that I'm sort of getting more. Before when it was like just three orders a day, obviously I could just pack those myself. But um, lately we've been getting on average about 10 orders a day. On the weekend, on Saturday, we had to pack 20. And today I have to pack another 20 by myself, so mm, probably going to take a couple hours to pack those. I have to respond to some emails. Um, we're launching a new collection in a couple of weeks, so I have a lot um, to prep for that. Um, and take some video content, like film TikToks and stuff. Um, take some flat lace for Instagram. Um, I'm trying to schedule out content on Mondays for the week, that way I don't have to do it like every single day, which I've been saying for ages now, but sometimes I'm just really indecisive, like I'll, I use Planoly to plan my feed, and I will like plan out my feed, schedule it, and then if I take like new photos or whatever, I'll feel like I'll have to like rearrange it again, so, but I, like in order to save time, I'm gonna try to schedule um, my Instagram posts at least one week ahead. Alright, so I have about 22 orders to pack um, from over the weekend. So I've got to get started on those. I don't know if you can see my slippers. But anyway, that's like the reality of working from home. Um, and usually what I'll do now that we're sort of getting more orders before what I would do is um, sort of pack like pack everything like pack the jewelry into the jewelry box and then pack it into the box like mailing box etc um, I will but now that we've got more what we try to do is we will prep all of the orders 
So I'll match the thank you cards once I've written them all out um, with the shipping labels. Um, and then we will place them, like pick the orders, so grab all the stock that we need for that order. And then pack all of them in their jewelry boxes and then once they're ready to go, we'll count how many boxes we need to make up. I'm currently waiting on mailing boxes to be delivered. I'm hoping that they arrive today, that way I can take these to the post office. Some people print out like a packing slip, but I feel like it's a waste of paper because the customer already gets sent their order obviously via email. So yeah, I will just either look on my iPad or I've added the SKUs onto the shipping label so I can also also use this as sort of like a packing slip. Okay, so I'm just going to pack those um, and watch some money heist while doing that to keep me going. Um, I've also got my iced coffee to keep me going but um, yeah, that's what I'm going to do probably for an hour. We'll try to get as much as I can done in an hour. So sanitize hands, obviously, and then in these drawers I keep our jewelry boxes. So I'm just getting out what I need. Um, and it's crazy that um, so I recently just got a shipment of 700 jewelry boxes um, because we were down to our last like 50 um, and I was panicking that they weren't going to arrive on time and that we would have no jewelry boxes left but luckily they came just in time and now I'm already having to consider reordering another thousand because obviously we're growing which means more orders um, each month means more jewelry boxes that we use. So I have to plan them out so we're not, you know, we're not out of stock um, because it obviously takes um, some time to produce. So I think it takes about a month for them to make, depending how many, um, and then about a month for shipping as well. So. Um, two months so that means I have to sort of like plan in advance to make sure that we're gonna have enough so I kind of estimate like okay last month we had 180 orders um, some of them have um, the smaller boxes that we use for like rings and earrings but majority of the time people will order at least two things two to three um, our sets are really popular so even up to five items which means we use about one or two of these each order. Um, so I estimated that we will need another 200 boxes each month if we're going at the same rate that we are now. So that means um, in order to have enough for, let's say six months, just so we like have some extra in case we have like, I don't know, a really busy month, um, I'm gonna order 1,200 of these size and then 500 of these just because we were down to I think 300 last month of the smaller ones so just so um, we have those um, in stock as well that way you know obviously if we can't ship out our items um, I mean if we don't have the boxes then we can't ship out our items and I don't want customers to be waiting so we always have to make sure these are in stock. While we're on the topic of jewelry boxes I will often get people commenting on like my TikTok videos or people DMing me, even emailing me asking where I get my jewelry boxes from. And while I'm all for supporting other businesses and I obviously this is why I post my content is to hopefully help people, um, you know, sort of grow their, grow their business. Um, and provide tips along the way, you know, that I've learned along the way to sort of, you know, if it, if it helps people not make mistakes. But at the same time, you sort of need to make your own mistakes in order to learn. Obviously, that's pretty cliche, but it's true. There's no harm in asking because I know, obviously, there's other small business owners that maybe are happy to share their manufacturer. That's obviously their prerogative if they want to share that information. But personally, I will share all of my, like, if you need to know supplies for like business cards, or thank you cards, stickers, um, etc., anything like that, I'm more than happy to share. 
but I just feel like when it comes to jewelry boxes, um, for me anyway, they're a big part of my branding and so I spent a lot of time, a lot of research, um, you know, ordering samples, making sure that I liked the box. Um, you know, I measured these myself and designed them, like the dimensions myself. They weren't like the stock standard um, dimensions that like the manufacturer offered. And so I feel like when people think they're entitled to that information instead of just doing their own research, I kind of feel like it's a bit of a slap in the face. Like I know they don't mean it and sometimes, you know, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt that they have done like research and maybe they're just scared of ordering things in case they don't like it. But unfortunately, you know, that's the risk you have to take in business. And um, also what works for me might not work for someone else. And so I don't want to, I guess, recommend my manufacturer and then someone uses them and then they don't like them and then they're like, blame me. I mean, I, I'm sure they wouldn't do that, but it's just like this thing I have, I don't, I guess want to be liable for that. Um, I know obviously I can't be held liable, but that's just sort of one of the reasons why I don't feel comfortable with sharing my manufacturer. In saying that, I'm not saying that like, oh, I invented these jewelry boxes and that's why I don't want people to copy me. That's not the case because I know there's other um, businesses that have very similar jewelry boxes. I'm not claiming that I'm the only one that uses them because like I said before, what works for me might not work for their jewelry. Like I specifically designed mine because it fit my jewelry how I wanted to. Um, and maybe think they think the same, like maybe they look at my jewelry boxes and think, oh, that'd be good for my jewelry. Oh, I should just ask her where she got hers from, which I get. Like, don't get me wrong. I've asked, you know, I've commented on people's like videos saying, you know, um, I hope you don't mind me asking like, where do you get your stickers from? The difference is I don't ever feel, I don't have that expectation that they're going to reply to me because they shouldn't feel obliged to reply to me. Um, you know, like shoot your shot. You can ask, but don't get offended if I don't want to share my manufacturer. That's all I'm saying. Just because I've had a few people that are like keeper or like calling me a gatekeeper or um, there's this particular person that like keeps commenting on... Um, my TikTok videos asking the same thing, like what are your dimensions for your jewelry boxes? Hey guys, I obviously did not finish the vlog the other day, so this vlog will probably end up being a mixture of a couple days during my week. Um, today is Friday, so it's one of my days off from my part-time job and um, one of the days that I focus obviously just running my business. But yeah, so at the moment um, I was just filming some TikToks um, and now I'm going to be um, packing some orders so I just gotta print out some shipping labels and write some thank you cards um, and I'll have another chat with you guys while I'm packing my orders um, what I was speaking about the other day I think I had to cut the uh, vlog short was um, about sharing uh, manufacturers when people ask like where do you get your jewelry boxes from or where do you get your jewelry from personally I don't feel like we should um, for those who don't want to share their suppliers uh, vendors manufacturers I don't think we should be called gatekeepers because if you're gatekeeping something you're limiting access to someone um, and if you have access to the internet, you have access to, you know, multiple platforms of finding these kinds of um, manufacturers or suppliers. So I just think you haven't done your research properly if you haven't been able to find a supplier. Or if it's one of those things where you've done your research, 
but you're too scared to order from a certain place because you know you never ordered from them like i can understand that fear of like you know you're risking your money um especially if it's an overseas supplier it's kind of you know it's a bit scary to think of sending your money um but we as business owners always have to take risk um i personally don't think not that it's not fair but that's the only way I can sort of explain it. Yeah, like I don't think it's fair for business owners who have put in like months of research trying to find the right manufacturer for them and their business just for someone to come along and expect to be told where to get everything. I think I mentioned before, like I I guess there's no harm in asking because some business owners will um, happily share their suppliers. Um, and that's fine, that's up to them. Just don't get salty when someone doesn't reply or doesn't give you that information. That's all I'm saying. Sorry, there's me um, There's construction going on next door, so that's the noise that you hear. Oh, and also, I get that at the end of the day, people, if they want, you know, like, to copy you or have something similar, like my manufacturer, lets me know that, um, you know, people will screenshot my TikTok videos of, um, like me packing my orders so they can, like, they screenshot a photo of the jewelry box and send it to, um, the manufacturer and pretty much ask for the same thing, um, which is fine, like, <laughs> at the end of the day, if someone's gonna copy you, they're gonna copy you. But it's been a couple months since I obviously filmed, um, or uploaded another YouTube video. I think in my last video I was, um, my goal was to make $9,000 that month. I think that was April. It's been a while, but, um, we've had quite a lot of growth since then, which is amazing. Um, but with that, you know, it's been super stressful as well because, you know, like growing pains. Um, which is a good problem to have. If you watch my other videos, you would know that I was aiming to make my first $100,000 in revenue by our first birthday. Um, and we hit that goal, which is amazing. Um, last month was our biggest month to date in sales. So August, we made just over $21,000. And I guess I just wanted to mention, I mean, I suppose I have mostly other small business owners watching, um, you know, I often get comments or questions on my TikTok asking like, how did you get there or what did you focus on? Um, and I just want to remind people that one, even though I'm super proud of that achievement and it's great, it doesn't, it's take into account all the expenses um, that go into running a business and trying to grow a business because a lot of that money or a lot of that profit I should say after expenses I mean it would be great if it just went into my pocket but it doesn't because I want to grow the business so a lot of it is getting more stock which means a higher obviously um, amount that we have to pay for um, the inventory and we also have started using a social uh, digital marketing agency to run ads for us so I think that has definitely played a big part in um, the growth over the past month um, since we started working with them but again that is a cost you know it's an expense that we have to take into account um, you know not just that but the actual ad spend so it, that's separate to paying for the agency um, to run the ads for you but yeah so I just want to remind people that just because you might see a small business really thriving um, or they're sharing that they've made a certain amount in revenue um, which is great just remember that um, in order to grow a business you in order to make money, you have to spend money. So, yeah, I definitely am not 
you know, rolling in money. Um, I'm still able to pay myself a small wage, which is great. But um, yeah, a lot of it is reinvested. And also another thing is you have to save money for tax because businesses get taxed quite a bit. Um, and you don't want to get to, if you're paying annually, you don't want to get to the end of the financial year and be left with this massive um, owing of tax if you haven't put money aside for it. So that's one thing that I like to do at the end of the month. Um, is put away about 20% of the sales. Um, that way, I, and I don't even think of it as my money, I just think that's that's the ATO's money because I don't want to get, I guess, a shock when I get um, the amount owing for tax. And I actually have my first appointment um, meeting, I guess, with a like a business consultant slash accountant because I've been tracking my expenses myself and um, while it's been fine for the most part it's starting to get overwhelming and I would prefer to get some guidance from someone obviously that specializes in business um, so that's on Monday which is I don't know it's kind of exciting I guess um, to get a bit of clarity about that kind of thing and that's, I guess, another thing that I'm trying to learn is trying to outsource. Because even though as a small business owner especially, it's easy, I think, for us to want to do everything and be in control of everything because we know the ins and outs. It's usually just us running it by ourselves. But in order to grow a business, you, or to be a small business, or to be a business owner, you can't do everything. So. Um, you know, simple things like I used to take the product photos myself and now I have um, a product photographer that does that for me. Um, yeah. Brought on, um, well not like hired because you know I don't have like employees yet but I guess like a sub or a freelancer. So um, she's creating some content for us like for website banners, um, Instagram stories which I normally would do myself and I guess I could still could it maybe just depends on schedules timing um but I just didn't have time and also I wanted to step up my content so um she creates really amazing content so I thought it's worth the cost of outsourcing to do that one less thing for me to do um but yeah so that's like the main update. Um, I'm going to film a separate video about the next um, six months um, to a year for, you know, my goals for the business. Um, I um, you know, I'm aiming to obviously run the business full time and so that's sort of in the works. Um, me trying to plan when I'm going to be leaving my 9 to 5 and I actually like I actually really enjoy my work um, my, I'm currently working part time but you know obviously to be able to grow the business and I need to have you know all the time that I can get to put 100% in um, you know if I've been able to grow the business working part-time imagine putting everything into the business and seeing how much more it can grow so yeah that's another thing that's happening so it's September 17 and I'm hoping by the end of November I will be running Omia full time, which is very exciting to say, and very scary. I'm just putting, now that um, all the jewelry is in their jewelry boxes, I'm packing them in mailing boxes. So that's why I like to pre-prepare like the, um, like fold the tissue paper before, just so it's 
you don't have to do it like one by one. So put that in there. And just double check that everything looks fine. And so that's because the box is, you know, they're obviously smaller. Um, and, you know, like when they're being delivered, I doubt the postman cares what's inside unless it says fragile. Um, so I like to put in another bit of tissue paper to sort of like fill in the void um, and it's less likely for the box to like move around and get damaged. So that's what I like to do. And then pop on the logo sticker. Sorry, the construction's so loud. And then I will put in a thank you card, a polishing cloth, and then the care guide. So basically just tells and advises the customer um, how to look after their jewelry because obviously with gold plated jewelry, it doesn't last forever. Um, the gold plating may discolor slightly over time due to you know like exposure to air different chemicals if you're wearing it in the water or in the shower etc so um, that just gives them a bit of a guide and i got our new water activated tape and i got this dispenser from ebay which is really good because then i don't have to cut the strips um and put the water on with a sponge um just because it gets a bit time consuming if you're doing multiple orders um, so yeah and then I just pop on the shipping label and an express tape I can get it off and then I'll just go in the tub what's ready to go and then do the next one but yeah so normally on Fridays, I will pack orders myself um, and try to get as many. I kind of set myself a cutoff date for orders that way. Um, it leaves me time to do other tasks rather than trying to get all the orders packed. Um, so about 1 p.m. after that orders that are placed after 1 p.m., they'll just get shipped out on Monday. And usually during the week when um, when I'm working my part-time job, my partner will help me pack orders after we have dinner. So our like routine lately, I'll usually finish work uh, depending how busy I, busy I am with my nine to five um, at like 4.30, 5 o'clock usually. And then we will make dinner, watch some Netflix for a little bit while we're um, eating dinner, just chill out and then we, um, I'll work on some admin tasks and my partner will usually go play Xbox or whatever, just chill out after, because you know he's had a full day of work already so he needs to have some time for himself um, and then later on, um, I will print out all like the shipping labels, write out the thank you cards, um, and then we'll pack orders together, depending how many orders we get. Um, you know, we usually finish pretty late, probably like 11 p.m. And then the next day I will <clears throat> usually on my lunch break go for a walk um, and drop off the orders to the post office. Um, or if there's a lot for me to carry, uh, I mean it's not that far of a walk, but if there's a lot to carry or I'm just like too busy and I haven't been able to go for a walk that day, um, my partner will stop by to collect the orders and he'll drop them off. But yeah, that's sort of our routine at the moment. A bit 
worried when Black Friday sales come around, like Christmas time. We're anticipating it to be, you know, or hopefully quite busy. But that means we may need help with packing orders, maybe certain weeks, if it's like a busier week. Um, but yeah, so luckily I have the help and not doing it completely by myself anymore. Um, but I know a lot of people out there are doing it by themselves and they don't have, I guess, the privilege of having, you know, a partner or a family member to help them. So for those that are doing it on their own, kudos to you guys, I know how it feels. And it's not easy. Especially when you're trying to balance life in general, like, you know, your business. When you're trying to grow your business, it's a, quite a big part of your life, but, you know, there's other um, other things that you can't neglect, you know, you can't um, forget about, like, your family or your relationships, but... Even now um, that my partner's helping a lot more, uh, when I was doing it all by myself, I would often, you know, overwork to the point where I literally had no days off. I was working, working in the business pretty much every minute that I could, and that's not healthy at the end of the day. You kind of have to step back and think why you're doing it. Like, So I try to allocate certain days or times for business and have at least one full day, like a full day weekend. Um, so Sundays normally, now I will just do nothing pretty much or try to, obviously other than like housework or groceries, blah, blah, blah. But um, I try not to do anything business wise. Because if you're burnt out, then, you know, you, you don't have the energy to put 100% into your business. And then, in turn, it's, you know, obviously going to affect you in the long run. So, it's better to take a step back sometimes. Um, have a break. So, you can improve your business instead of just, like, trying. Up. All right, so I'm just gonna head to the post office to drop off the orders and then I'll come back and work on scheduling some content for next week because we're launching a new collection. So I'll see you guys soon.